Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. For today's video, I am using Simon Says Stamps Etched Snowflakes background that I showed in the Hey Bestie release and review video I did just the other day. And when I showed the background, I was like, I want to use this with Nouveau Shimmer Powders, which is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I have my Misty stamp platform. I removed the foam pad. I've got my uh, stamp here kind of lined up. And then what I want to do is put a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of, um, this is Ranger's watercolor paper. So I put a bit of temporary adhesive on the back of it positioned the paper where I wanted it on the back of that stamp and then brought the base of the misty to the lid. That way um, the temporary adhesive is holding that in the base of the misty and then I can stamp this multiple times exactly where I want it which is really nice when you're using big background stamps because I know half the time I forget to press you know the entire surface area that sort of thing. So after I stamped it once, I'm going to stamp it a second time just to make sure I get a really good crisp image because of course this has, there's so much detail to the stamp. So inked it up with clear embossing ink. I'd already used my anti-static powder tool, stamped it a couple times there, um, rubbing really well, just using like the heel of my hand. And since it's winter, I'm always wearing cardigans. So it's just nice to have long sleeves. So after pressing that in, I remove it from the Misty and then I am using Ranger's Liquid Platinum Embossing Powder. I haven't used this in a long time and yet every time I, when I do use it then it's like I want to emboss all the things. This is just one of the most gorgeous colors of embossing powder because it's you know it's not silver it's not gold it's just it's a very unique color. So I coated the background with that embossed powder, melted it completely with my heat tool and did the whole process twice because while I have my supplies out, I might as well do it more than once. So both backgrounds here. And then I'm just covering my workspace with my big flower sack cloth that I like to use. This is really nice just to one, either protect my work surface or use it to like clean things, all that sort of stuff. Like it's getting completely stained and I'm fine with that. So I have both my backgrounds laid on this and then I am very gently sprinkling on some of the Nouveau Shimmer Powders. Now you do not want to squeeze these bottles. If you squeeze it, you will literally get a huge mound of powder, way more than you need. I literally just hold the bottle and just kind of scrape or tap my index finger on the bottom of the bottle and just it just gets a nice sprinkle. And then I spray, completely spray these down with a ton of water. It looks like a hot mess, that is okay. I then set them aside and try very, very hard not to touch them. <laughs> Cause that's my hardest thing is I always wanna like play with it, put my fingers in it, move it around with a brush, just leave it, let it do its thing. And then when it's dry, it looks so completely different and it's so pretty and shimmery and oh, love. So these are completely dry. So I ran them through my die cut machine with one of the uh, A2 thin frames wafer die. I also die cut some white cardstock with the thin frames and then I'll deal with that in a minute. While I was doing all my die cutting, I also used the Bold Thanks wafer die. This came in a kit several months ago. Um, as always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video. But this wafer die, I really, really like just the way the word is formed and like the flat bottom to it and everything. So I die cut that from scraps of white cardstock. And then I created a couple of handles with, again, just scraps of white cardstock. And I used that same temporary adhesive just on the very bottom of it. So I've got something to hold on to these die cuts. And then I'm protecting my fingers with just a little bit of post-it tape so I'm not getting them completely covered in the clear embossing ink. And I'm pressing the die cut word into that embossing ink and then coating it with that same liquid platinum embossing powder. Once it's coated, I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. Um, I didn't want just one coat. One coat's okay. Two coats makes it look fabulous. If you decide to add more coats, you can keep adding coats of embossing powder regardless of what type, like any metallic finish will work. Any embossing powder will work. But if you use metallic finishes, if you add more layers, it ends up looking like a, you know, metallic embellishment. I wasn't going for that. I just wanted the consistency with the embossing powder. So I did a second coat. Melted that again with my heat tool just to get that color and it just looks so pretty. And then I gently remove it from my little handle that I'd created. 
And then once it's removed, I heat it up one more time just to remove any. Usually there'll be little kind of sharp edges of embossing powder and whatnot where it was adhered. So I just quickly melt that and then I dropped it while it was still hot. So I had to fix it again, melted it again. <laughs> and this time tried a little harder to like let it cool off a few more seconds before like dropping it on its front again, but it was fine. So I repeat that process with the second one. And then I die cut more layers from the heavyweight white cardstock. And I'm going to stack these together to give it some depth and dimension. So I'm just using little dabs of the Craft Tacky glue. FYI, people have been asking me this. I've been getting emails about this. Uh, as of filming this video, the Craft Tacky glue is back in stock. I'll have a link to it with the supplies. Um, yeah, it was out of stock for quite a while for whatever reason. And then um, I got a, just got an email notification like yesterday or whenever it was, just the other day, that it is back in stock. So those that were, you know, sending me messages and, and leaving questions and that about this glue, it's, it's back in stock. Yay. Um, I need to order a bunch more. I love this glue. So I just used a little dab of the glue and I adhered all of these um, layers together. So I've got, you know, that nice dimension. And then I also pulled out my oldie but goodie favorite. This is the Big Thanks Words stamp set and some black cardstock. And I'm just going to stamp a couple of the sentiments from the set onto this black cardstock with that same clear embossing ink. And then I'm going to heat emboss these again with the liquid platinum embossing powder. This is what I mean. Once you start using it, you just can't stop. <laughs> so stamped it. I'm going to coat these with that liquid platinum embossing powder and then melt them again with my heat tool. And then off camera, I just trim these down with my little guillotine paper trimmer. So they're just little narrow sentiment strips. So make sure I got them completely melted with my heat tool. And then I'm going to trim those down with that guillotine paper trimmer. And then before I like start assembling the outsides of my cards, I wanted to finish the insides first. So I still had the stamp in my Misty. So what I did was I masked off what will be the top inside of the card. And I put a little bit of that temporary adhesive on the back of my card base and then did the same steps. So now it's like held into place inside the Misty. But this time I'm inking up the stamp with Simon's Fossil dye ink. This color of ink actually ends up, it's very close to the liquid platinum color. I was quite happy with that. I was like, oh, that's, it's perfect. So inked up the stamp with that, stamped that onto the inside of the card. And then once that's stamped, I can remove my masking tape and then reapply it onto the second card base. I just apply it right at the score line because these are top folding A2 size cards, so four and a quarter by five and a half. Had the temporary adhesive on the back of the card base again, and then same thing. Ink up the stamp, stamp it, and this time I did miss a spot. So thankfully it was all lined up. All I had to do was just close the lid of my Misty again and press right in the center of that snowflake, because that's exactly what I missed. Usually I'm not like, I'm not too sticky about the insides of the cards being perfect, but if I can fix it when I can, I will. So I've done all that, removed the um, masking tape, and then I need to remove that adhesive on the back of the card. So I'm just using my little Xyron adhesive eraser. This is kind of a must have tool. It's a couple bucks, had this for years. It just causes adhesive to kind of ball up and you can remove it from your cardstock. When the edges of it get really gummed up, you just trim them off and keep using it. So this little adhesive eraser literally, ha I have had this for years and it's only my second one in 15 plus years of card making. So definitely worth the three, three-ish dollars, whatever it cost. Um, yeah, it's the weirdest thing, like the feeling of it and just everything. And when you really think about how it all gets all gummed up, it's kind of gross, but it's great. So anyway, <laughs> after I'd removed that temporary adhesive, now I'm going to adhere all the pieces to the fronts of the cards. So I started with like the outer piece of my background. When I die cut it with the thin frame wafer die, I made sure to center the wafer die like perfectly because I knew I was going to use all the pieces. So I adhered the outer portion first and then I used that as a guide to put a really thin line of glue right around the very edge there and then filled in the center. And then I'm going to inlay the white cardstock frame that I cut and then inlay the center piece again. So it just gives it that little extra something. So I'm going to do this with both of my card bases, just adhere the outer portion, the white 
die cut frame and then the inner portion. And then um, I had those two little kind of frame pieces left from both of them. And there's nothing you can really do with them technically, but I was like, ooh, you know what? I'm just gonna adhere them to the inside of the card. So very thin amount of my craft tacky glue just goes around the edge of this frame, basically almost like kind of dotting it. Doesn't need to be perfect but I get just a really thin amount applied and then I'm going to adhere each of these frames to the insides of their cards that match with their background. And it just kind of finished off the inside because I didn't plan on adding, I'm not gonna add any more sentiments, anything. I just wanted to kind of leave it open-ended to write whatever I need to write to my recipient. So I got that adhered to the first card. Gonna follow the process with the second frame and the second card, just adding a really thin amount of this glue. Once the glue's on, I can kind of line up the frame into place and then just press it down and it'll be good to go. So with any sort of adhesive like this, if it's applying too thickly, you definitely want to wipe off the excess before you start pressing it down to your project and having glue seeping everywhere. But I find I just try to apply it a nice thin little, either a thin even line or just little tiny dots and it's good to go. So got the second frame adhered into place on this card base. And then once I've got that adhered, I can now adhere my sentiments to each of these card fronts. So I've got both the same thanks wafer die that I had heat embossed. And then the actual sentiments, I used a different one from the stamp set for each card, just to mix it up a little bit. So I'm just going to adhere the sentiment down with the craft tacky glue. And I'm also going to adhere the a uh, little sentiment strip below that with the craft tacky glue. Usually I pop this up with foam tape, but I just kind of liked how everything was going with these cards. So this time I just adhered the little sentiment strip with just a little bit of craft tacky glue. And as always, you could leave it here. These are great. They've got shimmer and the metallic and some sparkle with the nouveau background, the, the nouveau shimmer powders, but I'm gonna add bling. So I've got several different types of bling here. I have some Studio Cadia, I have Radiant Orchid, Pearls, uh, Iridescent Ice Flakes, those are perfect for this background, and some Icy Sparkle Crystals, as well as a couple little blue hearts from Little Things from Lucy's Cards, which I just got in the last couple weeks. Uh, I think they're discontinued already, which makes me really sad. I didn't even get a chance to show them in a haul video. So I added a couple of the blue hearts, but then all the other embellishments, the pearls and the crystals and the uh, ice flake crystals. So kind of sprinkled those throughout both of these card fronts. And then once I was happy with where everything was placed, I'm using the Studio Cadia embellishment wand. I've actually been using this for about a month or so now. I can't remember exactly when it came out. It came out recently and I have been using it and I'm loving it. Uh, very similar to the... Um, Crystal Katana. If you already own the Crystal Katana that we bought years ago that we paid a lot of money for, it's a pricey tool. Um, you definitely don't need anything else. This is very similar to it. This is a lot cheaper. <laughs> a lot cheaper. Oh my gosh. Um, and I really like it. And you're going to get replacement, the little black wax nib on it. You can get little replacement ones for this, which is fabulous. So I'm really happy with this. So as always, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video, all the tools, stamps, supplies, etc. So after I got all of my crystals and everything um, adhered in place, I turned my flashlight on my phone. I've been, I'm filming at night, so it's really hard to really show the shimmer and the sparkle and the background powders, but they're so pretty. Um, I do not seal them ever. I've never bothered. You could use like maybe a spray sealant if you really wanted to. I don't when I use these. I don't have a problem. It doesn't just fall off. It doesn't really rub off on my fingers. I don't really worry about it and I've never had a problem. So hopefully that covered everything. As always, links below in the description box um, for everything to my blog post, the supplies, etc. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!